Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of mprugs.com. My name is Mike. I'm the moderator in the series of videos that is not just about handmade Persian rugs, but handmade carpets from around the world. I welcome you to today's episode and I hope you and your family are doing well. In this video today, I'm going to be featuring several very popular and classic designs of Tabriz Persian rugs. And these are designs that I have featured in their own individual videos. But I've been getting questions about not just a little bit of the why the Tabriz rugs come in so many different designs and colors and shapes. Um, I've been uh, based on the questions that I've been getting, I thought I'm going to do a quick video and show you not only the three examples of very classic Tabriz designs, but I'm also going to briefly introduce you to some of the weavers that made the, that are as almost synonymous with those designs. So if you are into the Tabriz rugs, Persian rugs, or you just enjoy our channel, please feel free to watch this video as I'm going to be combining a little bit of history along with geography. And then we're going to talk about the rug designs and the weavers. And so to get started, Tabriz, for those of you that are, if you were to look at a map of Iran, you are going to find that Tabriz is along what is known as the ancient Silk Road. Um, northwestern Iran, it is in what is known as the Azerbaijan area. And it's right there by the Caucasus. This is also where my mother's side of the family is from. And so in Tabriz, for example, even though it is one of the main rug centers in Iran and one of the largest cities. Um, the people there, like my family, well, at least half of it, they speak Azari, which is, it's like a Turkish Persian dialect. And so you have a very heavy influence and you also have a tremendous amount of business influence, cultural influence. You, um, whereas most of the Persian rug weaving centers in Iran, they're kind of isolated. If you look at places like Isfahan, whether it's Nain, whether it's Kashan or Gom, you'll oftentimes see that they stick to a certain type of rug whether it's the uh, dyes, whether it's design colors, whether it's certain types of weaving techniques and everything. But in Tabriz, um, probably Tabriz and Gom, I would say, in my opinion, are the two most liberal rug weaving areas in Iran. And with liberal, what I mean by that is you can get just about any color you want, in the Tabriz rugs, like I said, I got three examples right here. And as you can see, um, very different designs, colors. And this is what the Tabriz rugs are known for. You can also get, oftentimes, when you talk about, for example, round, square, oval, not as common. But if you do see round Persian rugs, for example, chances are most of them are Tabriz. The same with oval. Whereas, for example, if you look at Isfahan rugs, you rarely ever find any oval, any octagon shapes, any uh, round or even square. They're just not that popular. Whereas in Tabriz, it's perfectly not normal, but it's far more common. The, uh, the city of Tabriz also being heavily influenced by the trading that was going on between Europe and Asia. The Tabrizi folks are known for being business-minded people. They are what is oftentimes known as a bazaari, um, the bazaar merchants. And so the mindset 
unlike in a lot of the other rug producing areas, um, as my family always said, if there's money to be made, a Tabrizi is in the midst of it. And this is what I think you will also find when it comes to the rugs. Whereas a lot, of, for example, in Nain, Isfahan, Keshan, Mashat, very traditional, they, they do one thing and they do it very well. And this is what they do. The Tabriz folks, they'll do anything. Well, I got to be careful how I'm going to say that. But they'll do just about anything for money. Um, and so what you will find is oftentimes their designs and everything, it kind of works along with, um, they see what's out there, what is popular at the moment, and then they make changes. And so this is why you will find a much larger variety in Tabriz rugs when it comes to colors and everything. But Again, one of the questions I was oftentimes asked is, why are the Tabriz rugs some of the most copied rugs that they are? For example, um, and I'm just going to use an example. We have the Mahi rug here. This is a classic, traditional, the, these are all 50 rug pieces. So a 50 rug meaning that they all have a silk foundation, about 350 knots per square inch. 50 rug also means rug is an old measuring uh, measuring tool, um, measurement system. It's what how they use to measure the quality of Tabriz rugs. One rug is about seven centimeters. So imagine if you were to put a measuring tape down on the back of the rug, and if you were to flip this rug over, um, you will see that it has about seven, uh, 50 knots per centimeter, uh, seven centimeters. And so that is what they call a 50 rug. Well, the rug behind me that I'm basically standing in front of is a Mahi rug. The Mahi rug is one of the most classic types of designs. Um, it has its origin in the Tabriz rugs. Depending on who you ask, they will tell you that also the influence is from the Caucasus rugs and from as well as from the Kurds who brought along like we, the Herati design. Um, you see that sometimes in the Bijar rugs. But Mahi is pretty synonymous with the Tabriz rugs. But as you can see here, here we have a classic piece and here is a picture. This is a very common Indian, Hindu Tabriz. And this is something, for example, you'll also find a few of them in our website at mprugs.com. You will find that, um, for example, um, people will sell these as Hindu Tabriz. And what's really important is that you notice the origin. There is, the city of Tabriz is in Iran, northwestern Iran. There is no other city of Tabriz that I know of. But basically, when you see a Tabriz, when you see this Mahi design, if it is not a Persian rug, and with Persian I'm talking Iranian Tabriz, then it is either sometimes even Chinese copies, but mainly a lot of those are Indian made. And these are rugs that are made in India. They are um, much thicker pile. And um, you will also see it in a moment. They will also copy the other two designs that you see here. But um, this is right here an Indian copy. This is the Persian copy. Now, when it comes to the Mahi rugs, one particular weaver stands out, and that is the Pirusian family. The Pirusian family, and we're blessed to have dealt with them for decades now. We have, um, being that we're in the wholesale business and that we specialize in the Tabriz rugs. And the fact that my family has had shops in Tabriz, and then obviously now we're in Europe. Um, 
we have a very close relationship and the Pirusians are known for one of the premier weavers of the Mahi design. So for those of you that are familiar with the Mahi design, you will know what a Pirusian is. The good news is the Pirusian Mahi rugs, they tend to make only larger pieces, but their um, quality and their price range is not really um, that far off. Normally, sometimes when you have famous weavers, the price just automatically skyrockets. With the Pirusian, it's not the case. In fact, the three rugs, the three different designs that I'm going to be featuring in this video, one of the reasons why I am choosing these three is because they all have famous names associated with the designs. But these are not people that are so, what's the word I would use, uh, conceited? These are people, they're very down-to-earth people, very honorable people, respectable people. And so they're, even though they're famous, their pricing um, is not really that outrageous. And this is the type of quality that they make. So when it comes to the Mahi rugs, you're talking Pirusian. I'm going to go over here then to the other end. This is a Gombat design. The Gombat design, again, I have featured this design in my own video. And for all of you out there, um, the description, as I always do, I put a bunch of information in the description below. Um, but And you can get it all there. Um, the Gombat design, which is what is known as a dome pattern. This is a design that is basically inspired by the architecture in the Middle East. If you look at um, whether it is large ancient buildings like bazaars or mosques, if you look at the, if, imagine either staring at walls or if you're inside and you're looking up at the ceiling and you will see these tiles, the decorations, that is oftentimes the Gombat design. That is what you see. Imagine being inside or even in some of the churches in Europe. Does this or does this not look like the glass? Um, inside, for example, Catholic churches. If you look at, I mean, the work, the way it's done and everything, but it's basically an architectural inspired design. Now, there are different types of Gombat designs. And if you um, want to, feel free to click, uh, look in the description below. If you look at the videos that I have made where I talk about the Gombat design, I showcase different types. Um, and so that's all there for you. But um, if you look over here again, you will also see at the picture, this is now an Indian version. Again, just like with the Mahi rug earlier, the Indian weavers have taken and they really have taken a liking to the Gombat design. Because unlike the Mahi, not only do you find the Gombat design in the classic wool type Indian rugs, these are really very thick, fairly thick, um, some of them have then silk highlights in them. But generally speaking, the Gombat design, very popular in the Indian, Pakistani, and Chinese rugs. But you will also find them commonly in the Kashmir rugs. And that is something that you typically do not find. You don't find Kashmirs with the Mahi design, but you will find plenty. Like, for example, we have a whole bunch of them in our own website where we actually have worked with the weavers in Kashmir and we actually help them design our own line of Kashmir rugs that have the Gombat design due to their popularity. When it comes to the Gombat rugs, the weaver that stands out, his name is Jafari. The Jafari family has been weaving rugs, although like so many workshops in Iran, they are slowly dwindling down. 
I honestly don't think that the Jaffari family is going to be around for... I would be surprised if they were still making rugs in the year 2030. Like so many of them, the younger folks, the next generation is really not that much interested in the rugs anymore. But this is a family that we have purchased many rugs from. And the Jaffaris are known for very, for their workmanship, just like with the Pirusians, with the Mahis. Um, the Jaffaris are really highly respected because the Gumbat design is very difficult to make. This is something that really requires an attention to detail because the symmetry, if there is a problem with the rug, the symmetry will be off. So when we have the Perusians for the Mahis, we have the Jaffais for the Gumbats, and lastly, we have probably the most popular type of Persian rug design that is, well, the most copied. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to move this aside. You know what, let's do it this way. There we go. I'm just going to um, move this all together. And this is a Faraji Tabris rug. We have um, a floral design. This pattern that you see here, and as you can see in the picture, this is classic Faraji. The Faraji family in Tabriz not only pioneered this beautiful pattern with all of the silk highlights and everything, but they became so famous that they actually have the design is named after them. So whereas the Pirusians with the Mahi or the Jaffais were one of the main weaving families of the particular design types, the Faragis actually, the design is named after them. That is how famous they are. But as you can see also, the Faraji design is something that you will typically find also oftentimes in machine-made rugs. Chinese rugs or in Indian rugs, as you can see here. This is a beautiful, beautiful, very luxurious looking design, very classic. What is beautiful about the Faraji design is that they tend to have uh, overall design, meaning no medallion. This is something that a lot of folks like, for example, for their dining rooms. Um, Sometimes even bedrooms, although with bedrooms, I always, a lot of people don't know, you can get twin sets, you can get twin runners and put them on the side of the bed. But I've had people who've also put these types of rugs in their home offices. They put the desk there, anywhere where the rug is needed without a medallion. The Faraji design is something um, that is very commonly used. And it's also one of the reasons why it is so popular. I mean, like I said, a lot of people, when they have dining rooms and everything, they don't want to have a medallion. Some people, a lot of people don't care, but I've had plenty who said, Mike, we'd rather have a rug without a medallion. And this is what the Faragis are known for. Like I said, this large floral, this roundish floral design with the silk and... Um, this is all classic, and oftentimes with the genuine Faragis, you also find a Faraji signature, which is typically center of the rug. So if you were to look in the middle, you will see it either right below the border, inside the field, if you look at it, you will see that there is a very small signature. Now, the design has become so popular that other weavers have also made the design. There is no trademark or anything like that for this design. And so sometimes you have genuine Faraji pieces and sometimes you have regular ones. And there's not a big difference 
the good news is because the Faraji design is so popular and is so well, uh, so widely spread, the Faragis really cannot charge a whole lot of money for their name. So I always tell people, um, genuinely speaking, not much of a difference. But if you are able to get a genuine Faraji, you'll see the signature. It's right there. Now, there are, um, like I said, in this video now, I've introduced you to three different types of workshops, three different types of designs. I'm not going to bother hanging up the Mahi again, but we have the Pirusian, we have the Jaffai, and then we have the Faraji. What I like about them is the fact that they are not as expensive, not, uh, for example, like the Isfahan Serafian. These three weavers workshops, they still make rugs that most people who are into Persian rugs, they can afford them. The Serafians are now almost like in the same category as like the Rolexes. Whereas these are more like nice luxury watches, but they're not yet up there. Um, but it's really nice um, workshops. I thought I'd introduce you to the three different types and show you some examples and also show you how they are copied. Now, for those of you that have been watching our channel, um, as I always say, if you have questions um, about any of the videos that I take, please put them in the comments section. Also, obviously, if you would like, um, it helps us out. If, uh, if you like to subscribe or give us a thumbs up, that certainly helps me with my ego. But, um, and if you do, I thank you for it. <laughs> but, um, the main thing is below, and this is what I have been, um, saying in all my videos. This is a, fun channel for us. Um, this is something I do in my spare time. But if you have questions, um, I always try to make myself available. If I'm able to help you, I will give you my best guesstimate. And I always welcome people, you know, to email me or to leave questions in the comments. There is the video below, uh, a link below to the video that tells you how to send me the pictures of rugs that you may have that if you need questions or something, um, so that I get the right information from you, the right type of pictures, and then I can get quickly back to you. So I hope you enjoyed our little voyage down to the city of Tabriz and learn a little bit about the Tabriz rug designs. I welcome you back to our channel anytime. I wish you and your family the very, very best. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon with the next videos. Take care. Best wishes. Bye-bye.